Now that we've got our topo solid and we've placed our building on the site, let's go ahead and talk about how we can further refine the topo solid to add features, for example, a road or a path that might be leading to the building. Now, we could try to go through and model that using something like a floor, placing that on top of the topo solid. But the big challenge there would be that because of all the slope and contours of the topo solid, it'd be really hard to kind of get the road or the floor to match those contours accurately. So rather than approaching it that way, we're going to use a special tool that's available for topo solids that'll let us subdivide a topo solid into discrete pieces and then change the materials to represent something like that rotor path. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. It all starts with basically selecting the topo solid that you're interested in either dividing or splitting. We'll talk about both methods. Okay. If I choose to subdivide a topo solid, Okay, we enter into the boundary drawing mode, and you could do that in 3D, or I might actually just go ahead and do it in one of the plan views. Let me go to the plan view, and then think about drawing the boundary of really what it is that I have in mind. Now I'm going to draw a roadway that cuts on down across the site towards the building. It probably would end up at a parking area or some sort of a lot, but let's just go ahead and kind of show you how you can draw that path and then change its materials. So to do that, maybe I'll use the spline tool since I'm going to be following, oh, kind of a path that could curve. And maybe it'll come around like this and Maybe swoop in here and kind of uh, take a more level route coming through there. Super. Now to draw the other side of the roadway, let me just go ahead and do an offset. That may be the easiest way to get two lines that are parallel. So I'll make this about 15 feet wide. And then I will just draw another one on that side. Super. So we're almost done with our boundary. Finally, we're going to close that boundary. And again, we could use any of the pink line rule techniques to go through and kind of create a closed boundary. We'll do it on that side and we'll do it on this side. Now on this side, I'm going to make sure that actually we don't exceed the boundary of the topo solid itself. So I'm going to actually cut it short just a hair. And I'll do a trim. Oops, looks like I can actually trim that. So maybe I'll just have to go through and pull the spline back a hair. Okay, we've got a good solid pink line boundary there. We can go ahead and close that on up. And if that's a complete boundary, super, we can go back to 3D and you'll see that we actually have something that's a little bit different now. Now for this additional kind of path that we just laid across the site, you'll see that it basically has the ability to assign a material to it as well as a height to it. By default, this extra path that we've added to the site comes in as a one foot above the contours. And if we'd like that to be flatter, to actually be right on the kind of surface itself, we'll make that a little bit thinner, only about one inch higher. And super, once we have that, we can then think about changing its materials. So, oh, I could call that asphalt or gravel. Let's see what I have available here. Looks like I have a gravel surface, but let me try asphalt instead. Asphalt pavement light gray. Super. We'll go ahead and use that one. So super. We now have that surface and that is always going to go through and match the underlying contours. The good news about modeling things this way is that if we do go through and change the contours, that surface is always going to match those contours, so we don't have to worry about maintaining that independently. So the subdividing of a topo solid actually works pretty well for what we want to do here. There is another technique, though, that I'll let you know about that you may want to use on occasion, and it's really when you need more control than that. For example, if you want to create a separate subdivision that actually has different contours, okay, or might want to be recessed. These subdivisions always have to have a positive elevation change, but if you want to kind of cut something in and change it to a different sort of material, we could use this other technique instead. It's actually called splitting. Okay, the topo solid instead. So here's the topo solid. And if we want to split the topo solid, what we can do is use the split tool. 
Okay, and say we're going to split an element. And then I'm going to choose the element to be split. And once again, we're in pink line mode. Let me go to the site and kind of look at that. And we'll think about really what splitting does instead. So for this one, I'm just going to draw a relatively simple kind of pink line profile for you to see it. Again, making sure that I don't exceed the boundary. I'll finish that up. It's working hard right now to go ahead and kind of create that additional topo solid. It's going to uh, just kind of be a brand new one. Let's come back in and we'll say take a look at what's happened here. Okay, so you can see that where I drew that big rectangle, I actually have a whole separate piece in here. And this separate piece not only can have a different material, it can have a whole different topo solid structure to it. So for example, if I wanted to make it out of water or something like that, I could. Now water wouldn't actually go through and slope down like this. That'd be more of a flat contour, so let's change it to something else. Let's change it into, oh, like a concrete path or something like that. Okay, super. Now, you might be wondering what the difference between these two different techniques is, and it's actually pretty subtle for our purposes. It becomes more important if you're trying to model oh, complex underground structures. But one difference is we can actually sub uh, lower this so that it's actually below the Tobo solid. So if, for example, I put that down to 244, boom, you can see it actually recesses down a little bit differently. Okay, so one thing is we can recess it as opposed to having it sitting on top. The other big change, though, is that this independent topo solid, in this case, can actually be modified independently. So if I say modify the elements, you'll see that these are the actual points that define that. So we can go through and start thinking about raising or lowering some of those to kind of create something that has entirely different contours than the surrounding contours. So if I say OK, you'll see I'm actually creating something that's quite independent from the things around it. So it has its uses for, again, for what we're going to be doing in these initial models. I would probably just stick with subdividing the topo solid, but you know, it's useful to know that this is available because you will have to use it on occasion when you really need to create something that's entirely separate that starts by following the same contours but ultimately allows you to kind of change the behavior quite a bit.